show that gives grown-ups a chance to win $1 million if they can prove that they're actually smarter than a fifth grader. We're here with our contestant, Caleb Covetson, a fast food manager from South Carolina, who started climbing our money ladder last time and won $25,000. We're trying to double that right now. Yeah, man. And he has Trace here to help him out. So nice to have you now. You're uh, working in a fast food place mm -hmm. now. Your manager there. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but before know. that, you were a driver's ed instructor. That's right. That's got to be the scariest job on the planet. Uh, it, it was. It was. I'm a, I'm a man of strong faith. I did a lot of praying. What was the scariest thing that ever happened while you had a student drive? Scariest thing that ever happened. So we're probably about an hour and a half into this lesson, and the kid's been great. We're doing fine, no problems. And all of a sudden, like, we just start heading for a truck parked on the side of the road. So I grabbed the wheel, and I turn it, and he fought me on the wheel. And I, I grabbed my other hand, and I was like, I mean, I had to put my weight in it and, like, my shoulder into it. You were training an assassin to drive a car. <laughs> yes, yes. So after that, we, we worked on parking. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I bet the like, rest, rest of the day, we're, we're parking. on parking. <laughs> All right. This next question is a freebie. No reason to drop out of school with a 25 grand, because if you miss the next one, you still have 25 grand. Sure. It's sure. a freebie. Get it's out of here, baby. Come on. All right, pick a subject. Let's double the 25 Asian right Asian now. History, Asian history. All right. Please, Asian history. All right, we got nothing to lose here. My man Trace has been, he's been screaming at me, third grade ancient history. Let's do third grade ancient history. Third yeah! grade ancient history. All right, it's worth $50,000. Here it is. What Greek god of the sea was brother to Zeus and Hades? What Greek god of the sea was brother to Zeus and Hades? All right, Trace has locked in his answer. And if every time you hear of the sea, you think chicken, you might not be smarter than a fifth grader. Uh, what are we thinking, Caleb? Man, I'm thinking like, it's one of those where it's, man, it's filed back in there somewhere, you know? It's, it's... Not like way back in the back yeah. in the box on the bottom, is it? <laughs> it might be way it back might there. It might be the box on the bottom. Ah, uh, all right. Well, Greek god of the sea was brother. Ah, uh, I feel like there's a trident involved. If it's not coming to me now, it's probably not going to come to me. I know I have a book in the classroom. Oh, that is it. Everything you wanted to know about Greek gods of the sea, but were afraid to ask. <laughs> What do you know? <laughs> so what would you like to do, Caleb? You do have a copy left. Yeah. Man, I'd like to hang on to that, you know? But uh, then again, I feel like these guys are going to know. I mean, these guys know their stuff, man. They've been good to me so far. All right, man, Trace seemed pretty confident. And I got some smart fifth graders here. I got nothing to lose. I'm okay. going gonna, gonna to lock in my copy. You're going to copy? I'm going to copy. All right, come on, Trace. Let's have a little powwow here, kids. Okay. Who remembers studying the Greek gods? I do. Everybody studied yes. the Greek gods. I read a book. Okay. And, and what's your, your gut saying, Lauren? Yeah. Hades was the god of, like, death. And, yeah, yeah like death. Yeah, it was like Zeus. And Zeus? Because, because, like because he's up. He got and the sky, but so Zeus, got the sea, and he Hades, got the Hades. Uh, Hades. Okay. Hades was the evil one. Zeus was like yeah. the strict one. He's Poseidon like, is like, it's like the good one. Hate, it's like a whole entire triangle. I gotta think, if you guys get this right, you're gonna be his god. He needs some help on this one. All right, are yeah. you ready to go back? Yes. Okay, all right, here we go. Okay. All right, after consulting with your classmates, write down what you would like. All right, Trace has locked it in. If you hadn't had the fifth graders and you had to answer, what would you have said? I mean, I'll be honest, it was just one of those where I was just drawing a blank. What would you say if I told you the right answer was Jerry? <laughs> Jerry. Jerry. You had no guess at all? I, I didn't. Okay. The correct answer is Poseidon. There it is. Now the bell's clanging. There ding, was a ding, trident ding. there, right? Yeah, yeah I yeah, think yeah, he yeah. had a trident. Okay. So, if Trace said Poseidon, you have $50,000. If not, you have $25,000, and you're going home. Take a look at the board. 
This fifth grader said. thought it was Poseidon. Man. Whew. And it's not a spelling question, so spelling doesn't count. <laughs> Great job, fifth graders. Oh, Every single one of them knew that. <laughs> but, Trace, we have no cheats left, oh. so you need to return to your desk. <laughs> Mr. Covison is on his own now. Thanks, dude. Thank you. So, we are out of cheats. D can't help you, Lauren can't help you. You are on your own. You're a big boy now. Woo. Four subjects remain. Which one would you like to see, Kelly? All right, uh -huh. I'll stick to the fourth grade here. We'll go with fourth grade health. Fourth grade health. The $100,000 question is going to be revealed right after this. <laughs> Welcome back, our contestant, Caleb Covison. He's got $50,000. We're trying to double that right now. Caleb, if you answer this question correctly, what will you have? A hundred thousand. A hundred thousand dollars. Thousand dollars. That's a good day's work. That is. That is. I'm gonna let you see the question. Okay. You can decide then if you want to risk it or if you want to walk away. For one hundred thousand dollars, here's our fourth grade question. In mammals. What is the layer of skin between the epidermis and the hypodermis? In mammals, what is the layer of skin between the epidermis and the hypodermis? What do we know about dermises? Um, uh, it pertains to skin. I will tell you this, in Hollywood, it has been stretched tighter than a banjo string in a lot of people. There you go. I'm guessing it's going to be uh, something with a dermis in it. Hmm. Man, I got to be honest. If I had a clue, I might take that risk. Um, but man, $50,000, that's a lot of money. It is. Um, and if Not I, only 50000 for you, 10000 for those kids yeah, in that yeah, school. Yeah, that's yeah. good. Man, that's I made a it good there. Yeah. Yes, for sure. So this is what I'm thinking. I don't know this answer. I'm so happy to be here. I'm happy with where I got. These fifth graders are awesome. They, they helped me out awesome. a ton today. I'm not going to risk this. I am not too proud to say I'm going to drop out of school. I'm going to lock that in. Dropping out of school. Congratulations, $50,000. Good job. What would you have guessed? Let's see, I, I told you everything I know. There's going to be a dermis in there somewhere. <laughs> so, middle dermis. Let me see what the kids said. He's right. He's right. She's right. She's right. And he's right. Dude, they are smart. Take a look at the board. The correct answer is the dermis. Oh, How about that? When you said there's a dermis in there somewhere, you were right about that. But you got $50,000. Right Wild that. Horse Elementary has $10,000. Yes, 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 so great having you on Thank the show, man. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah. Before you leave, there's a camera right there. Is there a little something you'd like to tell the world, Caleb? Absolutely. <laughs> My son may think I'm really, really smart, but I'm not smarter than a fifth grader. Don't go away. We'll be right back right after this.
fifth grader. You ready to meet your next classmate? Yeah! yeah! Here's a 40-year-old aerospace engineer who attended St. Anna's Catholic School Elementary. Please welcome Evan Belay! Evan, yeah, welcome to the show. Nice to have you here. Going oh, on yeah, yeah. Then. He kind of looks like Justin Bieber, doesn't he, kid? <laughs> Could you do just a little, just uh, a little flick? Yeah, yeah just like to get that. him out of the eyes <laughs> like that? What kind of student were you back then? I was a pretty good kid. I was a pretty good student. Well, I'm thinking so because you're an aerospace engineer. I got to think you did pretty well in school. Did you know early on that that's what you wanted to do? Uh, yeah, about 12 years old, I went to an air show and uh, I saw an airplane. It's called a Harrier take off vertically. Yeah. And then you know, I, just, you were I was in. hooked and I was, I was done at that Wow, point. that's yeah. awesome. <laughs> you ready to win a million dollars? I am, I am. I want to help you do that. All I got right. some smart kids to help Thank you God. out. Let's meet them now and pick your first classmate. Mason! Yeah! Dean! Lauren! Angela! And Trace! Yeah! Pick one of them and let's get started. Woo! Woo! Let's go with Angela. Angela, Angela come on up here. All right, Angela. All right. All right, let's take a look at your fifth grade profile page and your latest updates. She likes math and science. She's an honor student. How to make a snow angel. What is that all about? Well, it just snowed really hard, so I posted that because I wanted to show everyone how deep the snow is, and it was so soft. So soft, like so soft. powder. So, all right, let's take a look at that. <laughs> oh, wow, it is deep. <laughs> That's a perfect angel, too. Thank you. A lot of huffing and puffing there. You sound like my father-in-law trying to get out of the recliners. Like, ugh. <laughs> so let me tell you how this works, Evan. You're going to take a little test. It's 10 subjects. They go first grade through fifth grade. You can answer them in any order you like. Your first right answer is worth $1,000. Tenth right answer is worth $500,000. All right, yeah! yeah. You race this test. I'll give you a chance to claim you are smarter than a fifth grader. I'll give you one sixth grade question, which will be worth $1 million. You, you ready for this? Are you ready? All right, world, let's find out. Is Evan Valeri smarter than a fifth grader? <laughs> Ten subjects up there. What would you like first, Evan? Spelling! Spelling! You like spelling? I love spelling. All yeah. right, let's do some spelling. Spelling. Let's spelling. spelling it is. First grade spelling it is for $1,000. Here's the question. How many times does the letter M appear in the following sentence? My mom is messaging me. You were really hoping we were going to yeah, put the I sentence sure up there. <laughs> How many times does the letter M appear in the sentence, my mom is messaging me? All right, Angela's locked in her answer. What you thinking, Ev? All right, uh, Jeff, we're, uh... I might be an aerospace engineer, but I'm not uh, too proud to count on my fingers. <laughs> no, you okay. never, you're not in here. So, uh, so my mom, so my, it's got one M, mom's got two more, is messaging, we got one more there, me. That, uh, that sure does seem like five letters. I'm gonna lock in five. Lock it in five. <laughs> you said five? Did. Make you feel any better if I told you she said five? It sure does, because she looks like a smart girl. Because the correct answer is, in fact, five. Yeah. There it is. Yeah. Good job. No tricks here. All right. You got a thousand? Let's, Let's double that, all right? One down, nine to go. Yeah. Nine That's subjects five. remain. What would you like Social next? Studies. Social studies. Social studies. Social studies? You really like social studies? Yes. All right, you're my guide. I'm going with second grade social second studies. Second grade social studies it is. Correct answer will take you to $2,000. Right. Here's the question. 
Fill in the blank from the Declaration of Independence. We hold these blank to be self-evident. Fill in the blank from the Declaration of Independence. We hold these blank to be self-evident. All right, Angela's locked in her answer. Does this look familiar to you? It sure does. I believe uh, the answer is we hold these truths to be self-evident. Um, I'm fairly confident on that one, Jeff. I think I'm gonna lock in truths. Lock in. Lock it in truth. Let's take a look at what Mason said. Mason said truths. Does that make you feel right, better? I like that. I like that, Mason. I like it a I lot. Like it. Take a look at the board. The truth is, you have $2,000. Stuck. Now, they can only help you for two questions at a I time. Know, so, know. Angela, head back to the classroom. Thank you, Angela. You did awesome. I appreciate it. Evan, All pick right. another classmate. Uh, what's up, Mason? Mason, let's go, Mason, come on up here. Come on, Mason. All right, good five there. All right, let's go. Getting excited in the old classroom today, isn't it? Yeah, take a look at his profile page, Dean's List. His favorite subjects are history and vocabulary. What is it, wh wait a minute, what is bacon fried rice? Bacon fried rice is the most delicious thing on earth. <laughs> um, it's something that my mom made. So you want the ingredients? How to make sure. it? You put bacon, egg, rice, and fry it all together. I really want to yeah. try bacon fried rice. Uh, you Your mom's here, my... right? Yeah. yeah, there's mom. You can stop off for dinner if you like. That sounds great. All right. <laughs> you got 2,000. Next correct answer is worth 5,000. Oh, Eight oh, subjects boy. remain. What would you like next, Evan? Astronomy! I'm really good. U.S. history. U.S. history? Yeah. Well, I think we probably should start a little further down. But okay, okay. How do you feel about astronomy? You like astronomy? Yeah, let's do astronomy. Let's go with astronomy, Jeff. Astronomy, okay. Kind of makes sense. You're up in the air there, I'm, right? I'm hoping. I'm not that far up, but uh... yeah. All right. Correct answer is worth five thousand dollars. Here is our first grade astronomy question. Approximately how many days does it take the Earth to orbit the Sun? One, thirty, or three hundred and sixty-five? Approximately how many days does it take the Earth to orbit the Sun? One, thirty are 365. Mason's locked in his answer. What you thinking, Ev? Well, uh, you know, my son was just telling me this the other day. He's in elementary school, and uh, I actually told him 365, and he corrected me on it. And that's uh, the whole approximately thing there is, uh, saves you there. Approximately 365 days. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's my answer. 365. By a show of hands, how many of my fifth graders said 365? Yeah, we like that. Yeah. We like that, guys. All right. Make That's you feel smart. better? I have smart classmates. I, well, I do have a smart class. The correct answer is 365. Evan, you got 5,000. We're going to be playing for 10,000 when we come back. $5,000. We're working on turning that into a million. Now, Evan, you got your family here rooting for you, huh? I, I sure do. I can sure we do. meet them? Sure can, sure can. That's my wife, Jacinta, right there. Beautiful Jacinta. That's my son, Aiden. He's nine years old. He's Aiden, welcome grade. to the show. That's my daughter, Nadia, right there. She's six and in first grade. Oh, what a beautiful family, oh, man. Yeah. That's awesome. Jacinta was at uh, Barksdale Air Force Base, and uh, you actually happened to visit there. Uh, she's have? in the Air Force. And I just want to thank you on behalf of all the veterans uh, for your Oh, support. yeah, man. 
every time I get a chance, I go by a base or a military hospital just to say thank you. Thank you for your service there. Thank you. All right, we got 5,000. Next question could double that. Oh. Seven subjects remain. What would you like, Evan? Mason, you like math? I like math. Math is Yeah, you like, you got my math. back on it? Yeah. All right, all right, we're, we'll go with second grade math. Boys want math, all right. Math it is. Excellent. All right, our second grade math question is, Tonight's kid co-host question. Now, let me explain this to you, Ev. Tonight, we're trying to give students all over the country a little chance to grill the grown-ups. So this 11-year-old you're about to meet came in first place in the nation Ooh. for the National Archery School Program. Please say wow. hello to Maya Wilson. Maya, how are you? Boom. Yeah, yeah. Maya, welcome to the show. How are you? Good, how are you? I'm doing great. Congratulations on coming in first in the nation. That's pretty impressive. Thank you. You're a woman after my own heart. I shoot a bow as well. I love shooting a bow. Now, I'm guessing if you came in first place, you probably shoot better than most of the boys, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I, I love that. I love that. All right, Maya, well, I understand that you have got a question for us tonight. Yes. Second grade math, go ahead and give him the question. All right. If I shot five arrows in my archery class, if three arrows hit the 20-point circle and two arrows hit the 50-point bullseye, how many points did I score? Whoa, great question. I love that. All right. Here's the question again, Evan. Maya shot five arrows in archery class. If three arrows hit the 20-point circle and two arrows hit the 50-point bullseye, how many points did Maya score? All right, Mason's locked in his answer. Talk it out, Evan. All right, Maya, so, uh, so it looks like you shot five. And uh, you got three are hitting 20, so I'm looking at three times 20 is 60. And you've got uh, two arrows are hitting the 50, that's 100. Uh, I'm kind of thinking 160 points. Um, 60 and, and 100 is 160. I'm, I'm going to lock in 160, Jeff. You, you do understand we don't try to trick the second graders, right? <laughs> Maya, what is the actual correct answer? Bullseye, 160. 160, there you go. Thanks, Maya. Awesome. All right, thanks, Mason. Thanks, man. Thank you. Good luck and continued success, Maya. Congratulations. Thanks, Maya. And by the way, every fifth grader had it right, so good job, yeah, class. Yeah, that's my class! Yeah! All right, you've got 10,000. This next question is a biggie. Because up until this point, if you had missed one, you would have left us with nothing. You get this next question right, you're gonna leave here with $25,000 oh, today. So, Mason, your second question is up. You need to return to the classroom. Ed, you need to pick another classmate to help you with this one. Oh my goodness. Uh, I'm, I'm hearing a lot of D from the audience. Let's go with D. My D, man D. Come on up. All right, D. Come on up here, D. We got this. We got this, D. Woo. That's pretty cool. Girl shooting. You ever shot a bow? Uh, no. All right, I'll teach you. It's... Uh, can you help me shoot one at my brother? No, we're not shooting one at your brother. We're not. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at your fifth grade profile page and your latest updates. Mm -hmm. His favorite subjects are language and history. He is an art medal winner and shining star reader. D, what's tongue twisted? Um, I have a very unique talent that I can do with my tongue, and I wanted the world to see it. Of course you did. All right, so stick it out. Let me see. Oh, my goodness. All right, let's take a look at your video. You gonna touch Lee something? Sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, for crying out loud. 
<laughs> wow, the attack of the killer tongue. Yeah. So, <laughs> all right, Evan, pick your next <gasps> subject. Grandma! It's a big one. Grandma, I'm good at grammar. You're really good at grammar? Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm an engineer. We don't do a lot of grammar. <laughs> all right, you got my back on the stage. Give me five. We're, we're going to go with third grade grammar. Going with third grade grammar. All right. The third grade grammar question worth $25,000 is this. What word is the possessive noun in the following sentence? Mr. Foxworthy got fed up and took Angela's phone. What word is the possessive noun in the following sentence? Mr. Foxworthy got fed up and took Angela's phone. All right, D's locked in his answer. Yeah, like I said, I'm an That's engineer. That's not a real I'm confident a, uh... face right there, Evan. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, so I know possessive means you own something. Uh, and I, I, I remember hearing those words back in elementary school. Uh, boy, so, uh, so my two thoughts are Angela's or phone. Is it the possessor or the, po or the thing that is possessed? Is the... Uh, and I'm kind of feeling a little possessed right now. Yeah. <laughs> Wish I knew more about grammar. Let me explain your cheats. I haven't done that. You have three of them. You have a peek, which means you could look at your classmate's paper. If you don't like their answer, you can go with something else. You have a copy, which means your classmate at the podium will confer with their other classmates. They'll come back down and write the answer they like best. Or you have a save, meaning you could answer, and if you're wrong and your classmate at the podium is right, they could save you. Right. Uh... I believe it's the the person who owns something is the possessive noun. Um, so I'm gonna go with Angela's and I'm gonna lock that in. Lock it in Angela's. Okay. Well, you narrowed it down to the right two. Yeah. It's either Angela's <laughs> or phone. Oh boy. Are we giving you $25,000 or are we sending you home? Evan, take a look at the board. For $25,000, the correct answer is actually... Let's go third grade earth science. Work yeah. right up, right on up. Third grade earth science, yeah, okay. Now here's the cool thing about this one. At any point during the test, you can drop out of school, take the money you want. The only place it doesn't make sense to do it is right now. Because right. you got 25,000, even if you missed it, you still have 25,000. I always think of this as kind of the freebie, okay? Right. Earth science, it's now worth 50,000, Evan. It's getting interesting. Ooh, yes, it is. Wow. Our third grade question for $50,000 is this. Which of the following is a high, flat area of land? Basin, plateau, or knoll? Oh, boy. <laughs> D, I think you just made applesauce. <laughs> Which of the following is a high, flat area of land? Basin, plateau, or knoll? Uh, I, I'm pretty sure I know this one. I, I, I'm pretty sure it's a plateau. Uh, a knoll is kind of rounded hills kind of thing, and a basin's kind of like where water gathers, right? And, uh, you know, I, you know, plateau, I'm, I'm pretty sure the answer is B, plateau. Lock that in. B, plateau. <laughs> and you're a pilot, 
So hey, I imagine like you, so. you often look for a high flat area of land in case we have to set her down. <laughs> if it's plateau, you have $50,000. Take a look at the board. The right answer is... Now, Evan, this next question is worth, I want you to tell me how much. Oh, that's $100,000. $100,000. But if you miss it, you drop back down to $25,000. So that's a big swing, okay? Big drop. All right, D has answered his two questions. D, you and your tongue must return to the classroom. D, thanks, brother. Give me five, man. That was awesome. That All was right, awesome. Evan, you need to pick a new classmate. Oh. Uh, Lauren. Lauren, come on out. Yeah, Lauren, come on. Oh, Lauren, let's get yes. this. Let's get it, Lauren. Woo. Your mom and dad are here, right? Yeah. Now. Where are they? Let's say Hi, hello to them. Hey, everybody. Hey. She's doing great. How many brothers and sisters in your family? Well, there's nine kids total. What's the most annoying thing about being one out of nine? When their mom dresses them up. What do you mean? Well, one time we went to Michigan and she packed all matching outfits. I mean, there's there's one thing where it's like, oh yay, matching outfits. And then there's nothing. Me and my brother used to do that. Oh like, yay, matching outfits. Yeah, okay, that's that's one thing. There's another thing if it's like the same outfits like every day in Michigan. Well, what's wrong with that? Th there's a lot of stuff wrong with that. But we wore <laughs> Yeah. But we wore the dresses on different days. Oh, you had the same outfits, but you wore them yeah, on different days, so you won days. in the end. I yes, like that. Yes. All right. All right. This is where it starts getting fun, too, yeah. isn't it? I mean, they, they, they like every game, but when it starts getting up to $100,000, oh. they start honing in. <laughs> All right, let's win some money. Four subjects remain, Ooh. Evan. There they are. What would you like next? That could be hard. That could be difficult. Well, whatever um, you think, whatever. But you, you, you like measurement, huh? Yeah. We'll go with measurements. We're going to go with fourth grade, grade measurements. not failed me yet. I'm going to keep with them. And I love this. He's an aerospace engineer. She said, let's go with measurements. And he <laughs> said, that might be hard. <laughs> All right, Evan. Yeah. Correct answer gets you one hundred thousand oh. dollars. Here's the question. You got it. What unit of measurement was originally created by the Romans to describe the distance covered by one thousand paces of a soldier? What unit of measurement was originally created by the Romans to describe the distance covered by one thousand paces of a soldier? All right, Lauren's locked in her answer. Yeah, so, so a thousand paces of soldier, right? So it's a, a thousand steps. Uh, uh, goodness gracious. So a thousand steps is uh, not that far. I'm trying to think how far I Unless go. Unless you really have to go to the bathroom. Right, right. Because <laughs> walking like this a thousand steps is not easy. <laughs> so, you know, the first thing that pops in mind is, is a mile or, or a kilometer. Um, you know, the metric system wasn't developed till later, though. Uh, so, you know, kind of. Let me remind you of your cheats, too. Sure. You have all of them left. A peak means you look at your classmate's paper. If you like their answer, you can go with it. If not, you can do something else. You have a copy, which means your classmate at the desk has a little conference with the rest of the class. They come back, write down the answer they like the most, but you have to go with it. And you have a save, which means if you think you know the answer, you can answer. If you're wrong and your classmate here is right, they can save you. Right, right. You have an idea on this one. I'm a blank slate right now, Jeff. I, <laughs> I know a couple units of distance, but, uh, oh, that's a toughie. Uh, 
I'm, I'm thinking of using one of my cheats right now. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking I might want to uh, take a peek. Uh, take a peek take at a Lauren's peek. answer here, and uh, I'm going to lock that. I'm going to take lock a peek. A peek. <laughs> All right. All right, take a look at the board up there. All right. Lauren's answer is going to be revealed right after this. Contestant Evan Malari's got fifty thousand dollars. He's trying to turn that into a hundred thousand. Now, Evan, before the break, you had the fourth grade measurements question. What unit of measurement was originally created by the Romans to describe the distance covered by one thousand paces of a soldier? And you chose to use one of your cheats and peek at your classmate Lauren's paper. Oh boy, Evan, Lauren's answer is. Miles. Miles with smiles. <laughs> Miles with smiles. Uh, yeah. Uh, I think that's a pretty good guess, Lauren. Like I said, the metric system wasn't developed till later. Uh, but, you know, I, I don't know when a mile was, was come up with. Who came up with a mile? I, I honestly don't know. Um, thousand paces, you know? Oh, I'm, I'm trying to think of how many paces it would take me to get around a quarter mile track. 250 doesn't sound unreasonable. Um, my first thought was mile. Uh, Lauren, you said mile. I'm, I'm gonna go with mile. I'm gonna lock in mile. <laughs> Your wife doesn't look real confident over there. <laughs> Let's see if 1,000 paces oh. equals $100,000. Oh, boy. The correct answer is... Great job. Whew. I told you that one might be tough. Yeah. <laughs> she didn't bat an eye there. No, she's, she's brave. Now, Evan, we will be playing for $175,000 next time on the all new Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? <laughs> we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, everybody. a chance to win $1 million if they can prove that they're actually smarter than a fifth grader. We are here with Evan Ballari, an aerospace engineer who started climbing our money ladder last time and has won $100,000. Yeah! And he has Lauren up here helping him. We're on our way to a million. That's a lot of money, Jeff. That's a lot of money. Evan, what would you do with $100,000? Oh, I... You know, I, I've talked with Jacinta, and, and we've uh, we actually kicked around the idea of possibly getting a you know a small plane. A small we, plane, yeah, like wow! A Cessna or something. Would yeah. that do it? it? It would get a used one. Get a used yeah. one, all right. That'll do it. Well, let's work our way up to a board. new one. Yeah. Three subjects remain. Next correct answer is worth 175,000. Yeah. 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 You like history? I like history too. I really do. Uh, that's 175,000. Yeah, that's a lot. 
Let's go U.S. history. U.S. history. Fourth grade U.S. history. All right, fourth grade U.S. history. Oh, yeah. A correct answer is worth $175,000. Oh, yeah. Here is the question, Evan. What man was the U.S. Secretary of War and Provisional Governor of Cuba before being elected president in 1908? What man was the U.S. Secretary of War and Provisional Governor of Cuba before being elected president in 1908? Mm. Lawrence locked her answer in. Secretary of War and Provisional Governors of Cuba don't know a lot of Let's list provisional all the provisional governors, governors of Cuba, Cuba right? shall we? I just named all the ones that yeah. I could. And me too. Uh. <laughs> uh, Presidents in 1908, that's uh, a little easier. I know Roosevelt, Teddy Roosevelt was right around then. Wilson was just a little bit later. He was during uh, World War I. Uh, oh, goodness. Well, here's our options. You could drop out of school with $100,000. That's a lot of money. You have a copy left which means Lauren would go to the classroom, they would all discuss it. She would write the answer she liked the best, but you would have to go with it, or you have a save. You think you have an idea of what it is, and you're wrong, and she's right, she can save you. Yeah, I... Goodness gracious. Part of me really thinks Roosevelt, but there's, there's a little doubt in my mind there. Um, well, this is one of those questions. You either gain 75,000 or, or you, you lose, lose 75,000. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, those are big numbers. Um, okay, let's read it one more time. Let's, uh, U.S. Secretary of War. So, you know, I, I know Teddy Roosevelt also commanded the Rough Riders, uh, I believe, and he was like a, you know, in the army. Um, so, you know, him being the Secretary of War, War kind of makes sense. 1908. 1914 kind of makes sense. I got some smart classmates over there too, though. I, I think I might copy. You guys have been awesome for me. I'm gonna lock in a copy. I'm gonna put it online. Let's let's lock in a copy. I, I trust my classmates. Come on, Lauren. Okay, Lauren, since you're the one up there, what do you think? So I said William Tot. I'm pretty sure it's that. But I, but I want to hear what you guys think. Yeah. D? I, um. Anybody I know who was I, president I, I, in 1900? I put, I put President William. King William is last name. I knew. I know William. I, I, do I, know, it, I, I know it's William. No, I it's know William. If we just put a first I know name it. in the last name. No, you, you have to have a last name. You have to have, we a, have, last to have a last yeah. name. I know that William's his first name. Uh -huh. Just I'm not right. I'm not completely sure what his last name is, but I'm pre I'm pretty sure it's that. Yeah, I, yeah, but I don't know his last name. I think Lauren's answer is the best one. Yeah. William Todd. Uh, any other questions you have? Uh, no. Okay. Okay. Break. Ready to head back? Yes. Yeah. All right. All right. Oh. How well time is over. Oh my class. Lauren heard from her classmates. Now she will decide and lock in. I've got smart classmates. All right, Lauren has locked in her answer. If you had had to answer this without the help of them, what would you have said? You know, I probably would have went Roosevelt. Roosevelt? Teddy, Teddy Roosevelt? Teddy Roosevelt, yeah. Teddy Roosevelt. If you had just oh. said Teddy Roosevelt, Evan. Oh, you would have been absolutely wrong. Yeah. Okay. All right. He was president until 1908. Oh, okay. Oh, so Taft. Oh, I bet it's Taft. Oh, I hope you kids came up with Taft. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Well, here's the good news, Evan. Your classmates did not discuss Teddy Roosevelt. That's good. All right. You guys smarter than me. Take a look at the board. The correct answer is actually William Howard Taft. So, if Lawrence said William Taft, 
you have $175,000. If she said anything else, you have $25,000. That is a $150,000 swing. Now, you peeked at Lauren's paper for the $100,000 question, and she was right. Take a look at the board. Lauren said, William talked. Oh, no, no! <laughs> oh, Lauren, so oh. close. Oh, no. Way closer than Teddy Roosevelt. Oh. Here's the good news. You're not leaving empty-handed. You've got $25,000. Lauren, thank you. You did awesome. You did awesome. You guys are awesome. Evan, we've loved having you here. One last piece of business. Yeah. There is a camera there. My name's Evan Valeri, and I may know a lot about airplanes, but I'm not smarter than a fifth grader. Don't go away. We'll be right back right after this. <laughs> Are you guys ready to meet your new classmate? She is a 38-year-old assistant professor who attended Dyna Heights Elementary School. Please welcome Regina Trammell. What kind of student were you then? I was a pretty good student. I, I would imagine. You listen to this, kids. She's got a bachelor's degree, a master's degree, and she's working on her PhD. Wow, that is impressive. And it says you're good at talking, and you can talk your way out of most situations. I can. Such as? Such as speeding tickets. You can for talk instance, your way out of speeding absolutely. tickets? Absolutely. Okay, take absolutely. a look at that camera. I want every policeman in the United oh, no. States to take a look <laughs> at this face. That ended tonight, Regina. Oh. Here's the good news. We are going to give you a chance to win enough money. You're not going to have to there worry about speeding that tickets for the good. rest of your life. How about that? Good. Welcome to our classroom. These will be your classmates tonight. Joining our class, the first guest, Reagan. Reagan. Reagan, come on. Hey, Reagan. How are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm good. Let's look at your fifth grader profile page. Reagan loves singing, dancing, chess, and skating. I got to ask you about this, just because it's kind of in my wheelhouse. What is redneck Jenga? It's a, it's a giant Jenga. You know that game where you pull out the thing? With a little thing, yeah. Yeah, well, we were playing it with at our dad's house. Those, you understand, those are two by fours, right? I know, yes. See, this is, this is like most redneck activities. They always end up with a trip to the emergency room at the end of them. <laughs> Though I love it, I kind of want to play that with you. You feeling smart today? Feeling very smart. Very smart, that's a good thing. All right. All right, Regina, let me explain to you how our game works. On the board, you are going to see 10 subjects ranging from first grade through the fifth grade. Your first correct answer will be worth $1,000. The 10th question is worth $500,000. Whoa. Regina, you ace this test. We're going to give you a chance to prove that you actually are smarter than a fifth grader. We will give you a sixth grade question, which is worth $1 million. All right. Let's find out, is Regina Trammell smarter than a fifth grader? All right, Regina, there's your 10 subjects. Let's pick one and play for $1,000. Right. Let's, let's, let's start with first grade math. First grade mathematics. All right. Your first grade math question is, oh, a kid's co-host question. 
Here's how this works. Tonight, we are giving students from across the country a chance to grill the grown-ups. You might know this viral video sensation from just two words. Listen, Linda. His appeal to his mother for cupcakes has been seen by over 30 million people. Let's take a look. Listen, 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 you... listen, Linda. Listen, do not listen to me. Linda, you cannot Linda, have Linda, cupcakes Linda, for Linda, dinner. Linda, 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 mm -hmm. Linda but listen to me. Lick it, Linda, lick it, lick it, lick it. Honey, lick it, lick it, this. lick it, listen to me. Linda, I'm the argument in you. Please say hello to four-year-old internet sensation, Mateo Contreras. Mateo, how are you? Hi. Welcome to Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? Thank you. Now, Mateo, is that Linda? Yeah. Linda, bless your heart. Thank you. Here's my big question, and I think the whole world wants to know, Mateo, did you ever get the cupcake? No. Now, Mateo, I understand that your favorite thing about a cupcake is taking the paper off. Is that right? Yes. From now on, I think I would just tell Linda, you really don't want to eat the cupcake. You just want to take the paper off. Then once it's in your hand, whatever happens, happens. <laughs> so, Mateo, what would you like to be when you grow up? A cop. A cop? What a great and noble job. And, Mateo, let me ask you this. If you pulled over a woman that was going over the speed limit, <laughs> would you let her talk her way out of that ticket? No way, Jose. She gets the ticket. <laughs> <laughs> if she gave you a cupcake, would you let her slide from the ticket? Mm, no. No. <laughs> All right, Regina, listen carefully. Mateo has got your first grade math question. Take a look at the board. If Linda made a dozen cupcakes and I ate five of them, how many would there be? Oh, okay, thank you so much, great. You're welcome. All right, Regina, here is the question. If Linda makes a dozen cupcakes and Mateo eats five of them, how many cupcakes are left? All right, your classmate Reagan has locked in her answer. What are you thinking, Regina? I'm feeling pretty good about this one, Jeff. If Linda makes a dozen cupcakes, a dozen is 12, and Mateo eats five, I think there are seven cupcakes left. I'm gonna lock in seven. Seven. <laughs> Mateo, do you like that answer? Yeah. You like it? I think I do, too. Take a look at the board. The correct answer is, in fact, seven. You got $1,000. Nothing to it. Thank you, Mateo. Thank you, Linda. Bye. All right. Let's keep going. You want to double that 1000 Yes. Nine subjects remain on the board. It's time to pick your second one. First grade animal science, all right. Animal science is worth $2,000. Regina, here's the question. What is an animal doing when it is molting? A, hunting for food, B, shedding its skin, or C, laying its eggs? What is an animal doing when it is molting? Is it A, hunting for food, B, shedding its skin, or C, laying its eggs? I thought molting was what happens to an animal when it falls in a volcano. <laughs> All right, Regan has locked in her answer. What you thinking? I'm thinking I know this one, Jeff. I don't think it's hunting for food, and I don't think it's laying its eggs. So I'm gonna go with B, shutting its skin, and I'm locking that in. Locking it in. Let's take a look at the board and see. The correct answer is Reagan, you need to go back to the classroom. Good job. We'll be back with more. Are you smarter than a fifth grader right after this?
fifth grader, our contestant, Regina Trammo, has $2,000, and we are going to try to turn that into $5,000. And Regina, it is now time for you to choose another classmate. Me! Yeah, me too. This is off to a good start. As you can see, Dee is good at language arts and history. Art medal winner. Shining star in reading. <laughs> Looking over at your status updates. The one at the bottom, what's the, who buys this stuff? What's the story behind that? Um, I was walking down the aisle, uh -huh. and I saw these things, and they were called pig lips. And I was like, what the? I was like, what the world? Like, I'm OK if you use pigs for bacon. Like, good bacon is bacon. great. Yes, bacon is great. It can be like for bacon or a pet. But who takes the lips off a pig? You have no middle ground. It's either bacon or a pet. Yes, like, yeah, uh, it's, uh, <laughs> who the eats pig lips? lips? You know, well, all I'm imagining is all these pigs running around with no lips going oink, 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 <laughs> oink, oink. If I brought out some pig lips right now, would you try them? No, I'm like, yeah! No, okay. <laughs> you ever had a pig lip? No, no, I can't say that I have. I, I'm not going to say I'll never be that hungry, but I haven't been that hungry <laughs> yet, so I'm thankful for that. All right, well, right now, you have $2,000. Let's try to add to that. You have eight subjects remaining. Which one would you like next, Regina? Reading! Reading! I'm going to go with choice, second grade reading. Second grade reading it is. All right. Second grade reading, and we got a shining star reader here. Here's the question. The classic E.B. White novel, Charlotte's Web, centers around a spider named Charlotte and a pig named what? That's a coincidence. You get to pick any subject, and you pick the pig. <laughs> All right, D has locked in his answer. I will tell you this, Regina, this pig is not lipless, because I've read the book. <laughs> uh, have you read the book? I have read oh, the book. Oh, that's uh, good. I've read it with my kids, and there's a spider named Charlotte. She dies at the end. Sorry if I'm giving that away. <laughs> sorry. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> and... Um, I was this far from the end of the book last you? night. <laughs> I believe that pig was named Wilbur. Just walking in. I would like to give you $5,000. Was the pig's name Wilbur? Yes, it was! $5,000! Way to go! Now, Regina, I know you were smart in school, but it says on my card that you were also the queen of handball. Absolutely, Jeff. So you were athletic, too. And you and your friend Jennifer used yes. to hustle the boys on the handball court? We sure did. Jennifer and I, when we were out there on that court, we killed it. All the other sixth grade boys thought we had nothing in there, but we, we killed it. You dominated. We dominated. You and Jennifer. Take a look at the board. I want to show you a little photo That's that Jennifer. we found. You and Jennifer. Dominating the guys on the handball card. Do you believe that? All right, we'll take a look at the board. I got another little surprise for uh -oh. you. Hi, Regina. It's Jennifer, your fellow handball queen. I'm out here in Miami, Florida, wishing you a whole lot of luck and sending you a whole bunch of love on your game show. Why don't you take down those fifth graders just like we did on the court in elementary school? <laughs> 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 All right, let's keep going. Next question is worth $10,000. It is time for you to pick another subject. Okay. U.S. history! U.S. history! He's saying U.S. history, which is a third grade question. It's up to you. I'm going to go for second grade world geography. Second grade world geography it is, then. All right, this question is worth $10,000. Here it is. True or false, the Tropic of Capricorn is south of the equator. True or false, the Tropic of Capricorn is south of the equator. All right, D has locked in his answer. Regina, what do we know about the Tropic of Capricorn? 
Yeah, that Tropic of Capricorn, it's, it's on that globe. And um, there's... I think we've all learned something today, <laughs> haven't we, kids? Yes! There's uh, two tropics, though, I think. Um, the Tropic of Capricorn is south of the equator. I believe that's true because I believe the Tropic of Cancer is north of the equator. I'm feeling pretty confident about that one. So I'm gonna risk it. I'm gonna say true, locking it in. Wait, I didn't press it yet. <laughs> I did not press that yet. <laughs> that close. South of the equator. Okay, I'm just repeating it. Okay. Tropic of Capricorn is south of the equator. Am I confident? Let me just... I would hate to be with you in a shoe store. That's all <laughs> I'm saying. I'm like 99% sure of that, Jeff. I am, but I know I've got some cheats. Yeah, you have a save I left. I mean, if you are wrong You're and your classmate true. is right, they could save you. Okay, I'm going to say true, and I'm locking that in. Now I'm pressing it. Locking in true. And as I told you, you have a save, meaning if you're wrong and your classmate has a different answer, they could save you. However, D wrote true as well. So, it's all or nothing here. It's all or nothing. 10,000 or going home with zip. I sure hope it's true. Take a look at the board. The correct answer is... True! right there. Very nice. We're going to be playing for $25,000 when we come back. $10,000, and we are trying to turn that into $25,000. All right, well, Dee, you have to return to the classroom. Good job, Dee. Thank you. You've used Reagan, you've used Dee. Time to pick a new classmate. Okay, I'm gonna go with Trace. Trace, come on up. Let's take a look at your fifth grade profile page and your latest updates. Trace's favorite subjects are social studies and math. Trace loves playing piano, reading, playing baseball, and wakeboarding. You're a piano player, see, I didn't know that about yes, you. Yes, sir, I love playing piano. That's why I posted it on there. Is this an actual video? Yes, sir. Can we see the video, please? Heck yeah. What was the name of that song? It was called Bach Minuet by Bach. Bach Minuet by Bach. That's a weird yeah. how that worked He's out, isn't it? one of my uh, favorite composers, uh, Beethoven, Mozart, and Elton John. And Elton John. <laughs> so two of the greatest composers that ever lived and one guy who wrote Crocodile Rock. <laughs> it's never boring in here, I can tell you that. <laughs> All right, right now you've got $10,000. This next question is a big one. You get the next question right. No matter what happens the rest of the show, you're going home with no less than $25,000, okay? You need to get this one. need to get this one. That's a good day at work. All right, let's take a look at the remaining subjects, and you can choose which one you would like. What do you think, Trace? What do you like the best? Trey. U.S. history it is in the third grade. For $25,000, here's the U.S. history question. The Stamp Act of 1765 was the British Act of Parliament imposing a tax on what? A, T, B, horses, or C, paper. 
The Stamp Act of 1765 was a British act of parliament imposing a tax on what? A, T, B, horses, or C, paper? This is one of those questions I'm really glad that they gave choices because I thought it was stamps. So, uh, I would have been out already. All right, Chase has locked in his answer. What are you thinking, Regina? I'm thinking, I'm feeling pretty good about this one, Jeff. I really am. The Stamp Act, I don't think, has anything to do with horses. That doesn't make much sense to me whatsoever. So I'm going to eliminate B horses. And we know about the Boston Tea Party. And so I don't think the Stamp Act has anything to do with tea. So I'm going to go with C. Stamp and paper sound pretty close to me. I think there was a special paper that the, the colony, colonial people had to pay extra. So I'm going to go with C, paper, and I'm locking that in. Lock it in, paper. <laughs> Trace likes your answer. He said C as well. By a show of classroom hands, how many people had C? Ooh, that's four out of five students. Angela, what did you have? A-T. A-T. You know, a lot of people forget that each box of tea had a stamp on the outside. I really hope that's not related to this. I hope not either, Jeff. Because if it's paper, you got 25,000. If it's tea, you're going home with nothing. Take a look at the board. The correct answer is... C paper! Halfway through the test, which subject would you like? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I go with earth science. Earth science? Earth science. Third grade earth science. Third grade earth science it is. Here's the third grade earth science question. What is the name of a triangle-shaped deposit of sediment at the mouth of a river? What is the name of a triangle-shaped deposit of sediment at the mouth of a river? All right. Is what you thinking? And, uh, this is a hard one. I mean, I know that rivers have banks, but I don't know much about rivers, so I think... Well, let's talk about your okay. cheeks again. You have okay. a peek, which means you can peek at your classmate's paper. If you like the answer, you can take it. If not, you can go with something else. A copy means he will huddle with his fellow classmates. They'll discuss it. He'll come back and give his answer. Or you could try to guess if you're wrong and he has the right answer, he can save you. Okay, I think I'm going to go with a copy on this one. Copy. I'm gonna copy and I'm gonna lock that in. Okay, all right. Come on, I have Trace. faith in them. Let me ask you something. She says she doesn't know anything about rivers. That's sad. Oh, she has a degree? She's got a lot of degrees. She's got like a, she's working on oh. her doctor's degree, but. The more you know. I mean, but you guys are in the fifth grade. See, yeah. that's the key okay. to that. She probably hasn't studied rivers in a long time. Huh. You guys have studied yeah. rivers? Yes, yes. yes. definitely. So, so what, yeah. what are we thinking? Anybody got any ideas? I said Delta. 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 Well, if you guys are going to argue with each other, we're not going to do this anymore. <laughs> Delta. 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 It's Delta. Yeah, she's Delta. 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 This may be the shortest huddle in, in, in history here. Well, that's a good thing. Yeah, it is yeah, good. Bad. You ready to go back? All right, yeah. All right, come on. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> All right, after consulting with your classmates, write down what you would like. All right, Trace has locked it in. If you hadn't had the fifth graders and you had to answer, what would you have said? I really don't know much about reverse. Okay. Let's take a look at Trace's answer. He said Delta. If he's right, you have $50,000 and you have a bunch of fifth graders to thank for it. Take a look at the board. The correct answer is...
smarter than a fifth grader. Our contestant, Regina Trammell, has $50,000. We're trying to turn that into $100,000 right now. And I understand you have a couple of people in the audience really rooting for you today. You want to tell everybody who they are? Yes, my husband, Madison. Hello. And my kid, Patrick. Hi, my mom, Carly Sophia. She's doing great. She's doing great. Very calm good. Calm as a cucumber. She's a lot calmer of than people I am. come on here and get that deer in the headlights yeah. look. She doesn't have that. <laughs> yeah, she's cool under pressure. So Trace helps you get that fifty thousand dollars. Unfortunately, he's answered two questions, so he has to return to the classroom. Trace. You are down to only two classmates left. Which one would you like? Okay, I'm gonna go with Lauren. Lauren, come on up here. Let's look at your fifth grader profile page. Lauren likes math, English, and science. She's won straight A honors and a citizenship award. What's this update? More babies, to explain that to me. Okay, so that's me and my sisters, and those are the triplets, my brothers and sister. And that's when we first saw them in the hospital. So in this photo, there's five girls and two boys. Yes. But I know there's nine of them. <laughs> I think we know who's mom and dad we need to put on a prayer list. Uh, <laughs> nine kids. Yes. How fast can you name all the kids? Okay, let me try. Ashlyn, Lauren, Alexis, Brooke, Everly, Drew, Austin, Cozy, Camden. You didn't forget anybody. I love it. Well, I know they have to be proud of you because you're going to help her turn this 50000 into 100000 Yeah, right? yeah we are. All right, let's take a look at our subject board again. We are down to only four subjects left. As I said, the next correct answer is worth $100,000. What do you think, Lauren? What do you like? She said she's good at measurements. You're good at measurements? Yeah. OK, let's go with fourth grade measurements. Fourth grade measurements it is, then. This is the part where I start getting nervous, when it starts getting this high. I really want you to take this money home. All right, here's the fourth grade measurements question. If your mom sends you to the store for three gallons of ice cream, but the store only sells pints, how many pints must you buy? If your mom sends you to the store for three gallons of ice cream, but the store only sells pints, how many pints must you buy? Remember, this is worth $100,000. All right, Lawrence locked in her answer. I'm thinking if mom sends you to the store for three gallons of ice cream, she needs to be calling Jenny Craig. This, that's not okay. <laughs> that's just me. All right, you have $50,000. You can walk away. You can walk out of here with $50,000. What would you do with $50,000? Man, I would, I would do quite a bit. You could go pretty far with that $50,000. Yeah, it's, it's not a, it's not it's a bad not, day's pay, no, is it? No, but I've got some cheats left, Jeff. You do have some cheats left. I'm not ready to give it up yet. All right, well, what are you thinking on this? Are you good with measurements? You know what? That whole pints, gallons, stuff, that, oh, I wish I could say I was, I was good enough for this question, but I'm not. Um, but let me think about it for a second. So luckily my mom has never sent me to the store for three gallons. <laughs> um, and it's weird that the store only sells pints. I think it's just a convenience store is what must, it is, yeah. Must be. Technically they'd be a little more convenient if they sold gallons. So I'm not confident of this one. And Lauren seemed pretty confident. So I'm gonna use a cheat. And I have a peak left, so I'm going to peak, and I'm going to lock in peak. And lock in a peak. <laughs> so a peak means you can look at her answer. Are, are you thinking any possible answer before you look at hers to compare it to? I wish I, I don't, I really don't know how many pints goes into a gallon. I should, I feel like I should know that. That's kind of an integral part of this question, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So since I don't know that very well, I'm hoping Lauren knows. Okay, we'll take a look at the board and we'll show you what your classmate Lauren wrote. 
Lauren's answer is coming up right after this. If your mom sends you to the store for three gallons of ice cream, but the store only sells pints, how many pints must you buy? Let's take a look at the board and see what Lauren said. She said 48. She said 48. Okay, 16 pints. Pints are tiny. And you know what? I want to say that that number 16 did occur to me. So I'm going to go with Lauren's answer, 48. She got 16 pints for three gallons. The math looks really good. I'm going to lock in 48. Oh. Did you say 48. I want to check in with your husband. What do you think? To be honest, I'm doubting this answer a little bit. You're doubting the answer. I'm just worried. Maybe I'm overworried. But that's how I'm feeling. What are you thinking? I think maybe four. Four. Four, four pints in a gallon. I don't know why. If you had said four, you would have been absolutely wrong. Not Good. even close. Good. <laughs> well, the family's been a big help, Regina. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> You're clearly the smartest one in the family. We're just trying to figure out if you're smarter than a fifth grader. <laughs> All right, you have locked in 48. If 48 is correct, you have $100,000. If 48 is incorrect, as your husband thought, you have $25,000. Either way, it's a good day. Just one's about four times better than the other one. <laughs> Take a look at the board. The correct answer of how many pints you must buy is Twenty-four. Oh. 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 Take a look at the one gallon equals eight pints. Two pints to a quart, four quarts to a gallon. We were close. You just gave back seventy-five thousand dollars. Oh my goodness! But you got twenty-five. That's the good thing. One last piece of business before you leave, though. There is the camera. Let's hear the magic words, Regina. My name is Regina Chawla. I may be a professor, but I'm not smarter than a fifth grader. We'll see you next time. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs>